cropping images. In order to crop this image to the size I need in my page, I have to do a few things here. So first of all, we need to click on the crop tool here. And the crop tool is going to select the entire image, but it's not going to give me the size I need. And usually it comes up as this thing called ratio. And you can see that it's broken up into thirds here, um, side to side, top to bottom. Um, and so often when it comes to rule of thirds, this is what makes um, things more attractive to a person's eye is where those elements are placed. So if we take a look at DaVinci's image here, here we have the focus is at the top here. If you can see in this segment right here, rule of thirds, he's got an image of, uh, of a valley over here, some neat roadways here, the snake. If you know the history of Da Vinci, there's lots of great things hidden in this image uh, and meanings. And then on this side, we have the rest of the countryside over here and her hands are nicely placed um, right here. And we can see that we've got some nice balance with dark across the bottom, light across the top, mid range of colors in the middle. So it's just a really nice balance of color in that rule of thirds. Um, that's a whole other um, course on um, how to work with um, placement of things based on, on um, an artist's eye. Um, but it's pretty, it can be pretty basic. Um, I just kind of give you the basics there. So in order to crop this image, now that we have this nice rule of thirds, we've got this placement, I'm going to choose width, height, and resolution. And the reason for that is, is we know exactly what size we need. We need an eight and a half by 11. Now, if we were using bleed, we would add the quarter inch all the way around, which would give us nine by 11.5. But in this case, we're just gonna go straight ahead with our 8.5 by 11. And that's going to be inches. Now, this is sideways. So width, height, and resolution. That's because this came up as centimeters. I better type in I N for inches if I'm not set up for inches. There we go. And our destination is print. Print is always the higher number. So there are two numbers that we should remember. 300 is the one for print because we need four color um, for print, which is CMYK. Um, when we convert to PDF, it will convert our images to CMYK for the most part. Uh, we can do all of that here, but it's not necessary for this uh, project. And for digital, we need only 72. So that will definitely also change the size. So we're working with print. So we need eight and a half by 11 by 300 dots per inch as listed here. And now we have to place the image. And you know what? We just don't have enough, do we? We don't have enough top and bottom. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to crop it the way we want it. And yeah, we're gonna have some image left to the sides that we're gonna to have to fill. But guess what? Of course, there's a way we can do that. So I'm gonna make sure this is placed in the middle as Da Vinci intended. Maybe get a little bit more across the top. And you can see it's filled in with the background color here from my toolbox in the background. So how are we gonna fix that? Well, I'll show you that in a second. So we're cropping our image. So you want to uh, hit enter to lock that in. If that doesn't work, we have a check mark across the top of the screen here that you can click on, or you can also double click inside the space. So now I've got this terrible space over here. So what am I going to do with that? Well, I'm going to select my rectangular marquee tool. I'm gonna click and drag a selection of that space I need to fill. I'm just gonna slightly overlap the picture. Now, the other thing I have to do is make sure, guess what? I have to make sure I'm on the right uh, layer. So if I'm on my face layer, that, and I do this next step, this is going to look pretty weird. It's going to sample my face over and over again to fill the spots. That looks terrible. So what we want to do is make sure we have the correct layer selected, which is the background layer of the background we want to sample to fill. And now that I've got this nice overlap into the photo, just slightly, you don't need a lot, 
end this area selected using my marquee tool, I'm going to do edit, fill, and this feature is called content aware. It is aware of the content within the box here around it, and it's going to fill this area by sampling this area here. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, deselect, control D. How amazing is that? It's like they talked to Da Vinci and figured out how it was gonna fill in on this side. So let's do the same on the other side, slight overlap into the image, making sure to select the entire image on the right and let's do that again. So edit, fill, content aware. Control D. What you can see here, which is astonishing to me, but this is why we love Photoshop so much, is it even understood the angle of filling that in. Look at those angles. This is straight, but this comes down. Now there is gonna be some, you can see some of that repetition that isn't as great here and here, but you know what? It's in the background, so we're gonna be okay with that. So now you have an eight and a half by 11 filled into the edges. It's cropped to the right size. And now we're going to file, save as, and because this is still in PSD mode, so layered mode, I'm gonna save that as my JPEG. And this one is Carolyn Mona Lisa, and I'm actually gonna add the word cropped. And now I know it's ready to go to place in my magazine or my reference guide. We go, we can control the amount of compression. Eight is great. You can go higher, but will increase the size of your compressed file. And okay. And voila, there you go. Cropping and filling if you don't have enough to fill your crop.